Hey, good evening, Team Woodby. Good to be with you today so we can talk about some, some good news in our push through the COVID pandemic here. So, um, so we'll just start with uh, breaking news that you hear, heard here today uh, that we've been approved to go to health prediction condition Bravo from Charlie, and we're approved to go to reset stage two which is great. We can finally open up some services and, um, and uh, provide some of these things back to our sailors, chiefs, officers, and, uh, and families and, and all that. So we're really excited about this. We've been working for a while, working through how we're gonna do the service delivery, how we're gonna do it appropriately in the current situation, and, um, and certainly working through that approval process, which has taken a little time, but we're there. Uh, one of the nice things about this now that we're approved for reset stage two is that we now, according to that framework, control the decisions from here on out. So we'll, we will be instituting services right away starting tomorrow morning, and we will monitor those services and look at ways we can continue to expand that as we proceed through stage two and into stage three. So services that are going to open on the 17th of June, the gym, but not the NOF zone, uh, the galley and the NEX food outlets are going to provide sit down service. The Liberty Center uh, will be open. Convergence zone, MWR programming for groups up to 10, the golf course, Cliffside RV resort, uh, including yurts and rental RVs, the housing office, the Navy Lodge and NGIS will allow local Space A um, folks. So basically, if you live locally, then you could get a room there. But we are going to have to manage that because we do use those facilities for ROM. Uh, so those are just a quick list of things. I'll go through questions that I've received so far and, and some certain points on services that I want to talk about. Uh, but we'll be pushing this information out through social media and all hands emails as well so people get an idea of, of how these service deliveries are going. The 21st of June would be the barbers, hairstylists, tailors, dry cleaning. So they're all going through training this week that we had set up a little while ago uh, for those uh, training um, personnel to come in, get that training done this week. That'll be done on the 20th. So we'll be able to open up the barber, hairstylist, tailors, and dry cleaning on the 21st. And then the chapel will be able to provide an in-person service on the 21st of June, too, for, um, for no more than 50 people. The base theater will be on the 24th. And keglers in the conversion zone won't be until the 29th, because now that we have the approval, we need to go ahead and stock uh, keglers and, and get it ready to actually open. So, so that's kind of the quick list of, of stuff there. So let me start by going through some of these questions. Um, questions. One of the questions I want to take at the start is the travel question. And <clears throat> it's complicated, okay? Um, people have individual cases when it comes to PCS or temporary duty travel. And so 
what the answer might be today for that particular situation might be different tomorrow or next week. So the theme here is that you have to stay in constant communication with the chain of command. If you're PCSing, then call the My Navy Career Center and make sure you talk with, with them, okay? Anybody PCSing, you should be calling the My Navy Career Center to, to talk to people there to answer your questions. Also, I recommend you follow My Navy HR on Facebook, Instagram, et cetera, so that you can watch their videos. We, we shared some of their videos, but also you can post questions in, uh, in their social media and their folks will answer you there as well. So you can get answers there. You can get answers through the My Navy Career Center, but certainly through all that, stay connected with your chain of command, with your PCS and your outgoing and your, and your uh, incoming chain of command sponsor and ombudsman. So you can um, work through the weekly changes that will take place. So um, one of the things that we did not get was a um, uh, approval to go green on the installation. So if you go to, yeah, in the NAV admin, there's the link for the website that has the status of the states, nations, and um, installations. So there's there's two things. And you, you go into that website. I've done it myself. Uh, it's on the My Navy portal. So it does need... Um, CAC registration uh, to be able to enter or the CAC credentials to enter it. And because I did try to do it from home, didn't work. I did it from my work computer. So that's what you got to do. But you end up with these two spreadsheets here. Okay. So this one over here is from basically from the Secretary of Defense uh, memo. And these are all the states. Okay. And whether they're green or red. Here we are down at the bottom. Here's Washington. We're green. Okay, so from, from OSD perspective, we're green on that. And then you have territories and host nations. We've got a couple of them marked here. You got Italy is red and Japan is green. Okay, then you also have to go to factor two, which is the DOD installations and facilities. Okay, so this is the status that Navy controls, and you can see what it is there. Everybody's red. So we are in a green state, but we're a red installation, just like every other installation. Uh, but there are installations, including us, who are requesting to go to a green status because of what we're seeing on the installation and what we're seeing in our surrounding community. So I'm hopeful that we'll get a decision on that soon. And, um, and so I look forward to being green sometime soon. So what does that all mean to you? Okay. So first of all, do you need to ROM or do you need to get a waiver? And it's tricky. Okay. So, and everybody's got their own situation. So I'm, it's very challenging to give you one answer because the answer is going to be uh, work through the chain of command. And, and, uh, and then if, if the results in needing a waiver, then you have to get a waiver. I'll just run through a couple scenarios uh, with some assumptions here. So let's say you're PCSing from Corpus Christi up here to NASWI. You're going to go from Texas and you want to see family in Northern California. Texas is green. Corpus is red. Assuming, um, let's assume that we were green. Regardless, a waiver would be required, okay, because Corpus is red. If it was green and we're green, then a waiver is not required. However, when it comes to PCS or leave, you have to look at where you're tra traveling through. There's a couple things that could place a ROM requirement on you. There's a couple of things you can do if you're doing a, official travel um, that would allow you to, if you're going green to green, not have to ROM. That would be if you're flying mill air, okay? Like if you're a deploying squad and returning, then you're flying mill air or a contract carrier that is only our folks and your green installation and you're coming here. I certainly see sometime in the future, I don't know if it's before the 4th of July or when it's going to when it's going to be, but there is a path to not having a ROM, okay? But I, right now, that's not the case. And then um, uh, in the case of this person who wants to go from Texas, which is green, if the installation was green, Washington's green, if NASWI was green, but they want to go through Northern California, which is red, then you're going to have to go into a ROM situation. So that's where you got it. The gaining command needs to be involved 
to be able to assess whether there's going to be a ROM there. Okay. And so, so that's how that goes on a PCS. We look at another one. Uh, it's a squadron sending a detachment to NAS Fallon. Okay. NAS Fallon went to stage two uh, a week or so ago, or maybe two weeks ago. And so typically we fly a, a NALO, a, um, uh, you know, one of our uh, C-40s to carry the personnel down there to Fallon, okay? And then there's certain restrictions on what they can do down there. So they basically maintain a bubble down there and then they come back. So that's why they don't need to ROM because of those mitigations we take when we're doing detachment detachments that way and because we're using mill air. If you were to have to separate from the group and, and use your own commercial air or something like that, now you're going into a situation where you're probably going to have to ROM. Okay. So that's, that's that stuff. The other thing I will say, the Canadian travel ban has is, is been extended to the 21st of July. So Canada is still off limits. So then your next question is, what can I do for leave and liberty? Okay. So being that we got the answer today that we're still red, uh, I'm working through how we can articulate to folks, what, what can you do in Washington state? Can you go camping out on the east of the mountains? Can you go out to the Olympic Peninsula? All that kind of stuff. So um, not ready to answer that yet. I'm going to get information out this week on what the expectations are, because again, this stuff is evolving day to day, week to week. So right now, um, you know, we're still living under that uh, since we're a red installation, Everett's a red installation, MBK is a red installation, living under the fleet forces expectation that you're between residents and work and all that. But I am hopeful that we'll be able to change that soon and provide a little more freedom for people to move around Washington. Now, if you want to take leave, there is a process to take leave. Okay. And as we see installations starting to go green, we see a little more freedom of movement there. And then also certainly if there's a, if there's a family emergency or something like that, there's a process to be able to get a waiver for leave travel. And we've, we've certainly seen some of those cases. So let's see. Um, so that answers what is the update on sailors coming home from deployment, specifically ROM. So if they were to come home today, I would expect that they would have to ROM. Now, not um, the AQ-137, we had their flying, you saw it on our Facebook. And so as they come home, they're coming direct from the carrier, which hasn't had a port call in God knows how long. And so they are truly a clean bubble and they're getting right onto military airlift coming right here. So those personnel are not going to have to ROM. But expeditionary wise, we've got some of them coming home soon. So they're going to have to ROM until we see a change, if, unless we see a change in policy between now and when they come home. And then status change to HBCOM Bravo, does that lift leave liberty restrictions? So I just talked about that. We're still working through local, uh, local leave and liberty expectations. And then um, we'll see as the summer progresses, as long as community trends here and across the country, um, if, as long as they, if they continue to improve, then we'll see some easing of restrictions, but I can't project what that's going to be at this time. Um, so, yeah, and there was, a, there was one about taking leave to go to Texas. So personal situations, keep, uh, you know, go, get to this My Navy Portal COVID travel tracker. People take a look at that. I expect this to be updated on Friday, I believe is what they said they would do. And uh, just take a look at that. Work, work with your chain of command on how to get that leave. Okay, so let's get into some of the services. Uh, one of the questions that I just got, what would cause a return to HPCon Charlie? So the reason we're in HPCon Bravo now is because of the basically the opening up America uh, framework for uh, that filtered down through DOD to us and the tracking the trends in how many cases per 100,000 and what the four, 14 day uh, trends have been, if they've been declining trends in Island and Skagit counties. And so we'll continue tracking that. If we see a sharp increase in cases, certainly in Island County, then basically we would be looking at that information. 
determine if we need to lock back down and go to HP Con Charlie and shut down services again. So that's something that we would be, we'll continue to monitor constantly and we would make that decision if we felt that there was a risk to force, risk to our mission because of resurgence of COVID-19. Is there seasonality to it? Are we gonna see it this coming winter? I don't know. I'm not gonna project any of that stuff. You can get all kinds of different opinions that all say they're science backed online, make your own assessments, but we'll continue to evaluate that and evaluate the guidance as it comes out and uh, analyze that. Likewise, what's it gonna take to get to HPCon Alpha? Not sure yet, but obviously we're, we wanna continue marching in that direction. So even though we do have these liberties, these services that are open up to us, continue to take mitigations, please, so that we don't put ourselves in a tight spot and more importantly, we can continue the trend downhill and uh, someday soon get to HPCon Alpha. Child care. So I did the child care town hall recently. I think it was a week ago today. So you can view that if you got some specific things you want to see. I'm just going to touch on it here with some follow-ups. I would mentioned 40 additional seats for the 29th of June. We are still working towards that. So looking forward to opening up more spots. In addition, we've been able to hire more people. So we, we do have a couple more hires. We've got some more packages that we're looking at. So please, if you know somebody who wants to get into childcare, it's a great opportunity to do that. You put your, yourself at the top of the, the list as well. And um, we also have, because one of the things I emphasized in that childcare town hall was that if you do have a spot, you're mission critical, you're working five days a week, um, whatever the situation is, if you know that your child's not going to be in child care that day, please call as soon as possible because every child that's in there, there's 10, 20 other children that want to be in there Well, their parents want them to be in there and so that they can go to work um, and do their thing out in town or whatever. So if you know you're not going to be there, please call the uh, CYP, let them know. And we have been seeing that happening. So I really appreciate the folks who are doing that. That's a great community uh, cooperative effort. And also we have people calling every day who want to get in space available and they're getting in because they're calling first thing in the morning and they're, they're able to get in uh, every time. So if you, if you want care, call every morning to see if you can get in there. If you have care and you know your child's not going to be there that day, please call and let them know so we can let somebody else in. Let's see. Yep. Uh, so what's next for, for, uh, for this program? Well, the 40 more seats on the 29th of June, uh, we've got those new hires. So again, you know, we were at hundred percent of our, of our staffing when we went into coronavirus, we lost some due to people leaving uh, for whatever reason. Uh, we also have others who are high risk individuals who are not able to come back to work. And so therefore we're still only in regatta. Uh, we see a path to opening up Clover, uh, maybe a month, month and a half, but we're not there yet. And so, um, and so opening up Clover is not just easy to open the doors and, because there's a bunch of extra staffing that goes behind the scenes as well. So there's a lot to that, but we're going to continue working towards that. And uh, when we get to a status, HPCon Alpha and Stage 3, where we are bringing everybody back to work, then we could, you know, that, that's when we're, we're looking to be back to full staffing and uh, full capacity. Now, again, we'll keep the hiring things going on so that we can try to get to full capacity by that time. But, but that's where we'll be at as much capacity as we can get to. So that's at the HPCon Alpha and Stage 3 phase when we can bring everybody back to work. Let's see. So how and when are CYP bringing back displaced families and new criteria? So that's really that HPCon Alpha Stage 3 where we'd be able to go out with that 14-day notice for the people who – we're not in the CYP program when the coronavirus hit. So we're going to provide them a 14 day notice that they're no, like, no longer going to be eligible for care. And those people who did have their children in CYP and they were displaced, 
we would provide them the 14 day notice that they'll be able to get their seat back based on who had that access when we started this. And from here on out, we'll make sure that we adhere to that 14 day notice that for some reason we have to displace anybody between now and then. So the gym, that gets a lot of questions. Thankfully, we need to get keeping them active. So we're gonna, the first phase of opening is gonna be active duty only, okay? And it's also gonna have a break in there. We're gonna do no NOF zone, no spin room, no TRX, none of the team sports, no daily use lockers, no showers, no water fountains, no saunas, no family fitness, no towel service, okay? So it's gonna be bring your own towel, bring your own water bottle, come in, check in. It's gonna be a, a limit of 100 people in the building at a time. Uh, we want you to only be in there for an hour. So bring your water bottle, bring your towel, get in there, check in, go do your workout, come back out so that somebody else can come in. And we'll do your temperature at the entrance and other enhanced screening measures. And, um, and so there will also be, uh, it's going to be from 05 to 10, 11 to 1400 and 1500, 2100. So we can get that hour break a couple times in the day so we can do some, some more cleaning. So again, it's just going to start with active duty only. <clears throat> and then as we see how that's working for a little bit, then we'll look to open that up to dependents, uh, retirees, other affiliated personnel. So looking forward to getting to that point, but please give us some time to work through how the process is working, see if the capacity limits are what, where they need to be, what kind of adjustments we need to make. We'll constantly take a look at that and try to provide as much access to that facility as we can. For the galley and food outlets, resume sit-down eating. Uh, so the seating is reduced. Please don't move the tables and chairs. Follow the arrows and signs that direct flow in the eating area, eating facilities. Uh, so that'll be good to get that a little bit of sit-down and um, to support all the folks around here. Liberty Center, Convergence Zone, Base Theater. Okay, they're all going to be open. Like I said, Liberty, uh, Liberty Center and the Convergence Zone will open tomorrow on the 17th. Kegler's will open on the 29th. Base Theater will open on the 24th of June. Uh, by the way, in the Liberty Center and the Convergence Zone, we've been doing some construction projects in the meantime. So in the Convergence Zone, you'll have the new restrooms. And in the Liberty Center, we've done some reorganization of the space and some construction in there. So it's a much nicer space in there. So a lot of the same stuff. Um, we're going to try to impose time limits on all these facilities, make sure that we can kind of fair share the usage of it, uh, reduced hours because we'll have some cleaning breaks in there. And um, the theater, we're gonna have rows blocked off. So we'll have, uh, again, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into this and there's even a page two here. So a lot of stuff that goes into this. We're gonna be pushing this stuff out, this information out, social media and um, in all hands and stuff so that we can uh, so you can see the specifics of these services and whenever we change these as we go. So I encourage you to follow NAS Whidbey Island and the Navy Life uh, Whidbey Island Facebook pages and, and other outlets so that you can get the information. So for an example, you know, in the theater, it's over here, we're going to have the balcony and baby room seating closed, rows and sections of two will be secured, no upstairs bathrooms, one showing a day, no box office movies until September, uh, and all movies will be free until the box office program is reestablished. We'll have 162 seats available and temperature scanning at the entrance, etc. All snacks, including popcorn, will be packaged. No free refills on large drinks, that kind of stuff. When we get to uh, Kegler's isn't going to open the 29th, so I'm not going to cover that. <clears throat> Community recreation, no indoor playground, okay? So I'm going to go right into the playground discussion. The uh, hunt playgrounds are not open yet. Really, we see that as a phase three uh, thing. You know, our our playground at um, uh, over here on Alt Field, over by the ball field, is not open yet. So we see that as being more of a phase three thing. We'll continue to evaluate that, try to get those open uh, as soon as we can. And so at the convergence zone, no indoor playground, uh, no no multi-purpose room rental. And no desktop usage, no daily use lockers, limited seating. The bowling is open. The bowling center will be open. Reduction in lane use so we can make sure we enforce some physical distancing there. 
and uh, and some other things uh, there that you can um, follow us for updates on those. Okay, so that's Liberty Center Convergence Stone Base Theater. Uh, as I mentioned on the MWR programs, we're going to institute the programs that we can do physical distancing, limiting to number 10 to 10 personnel maximum, and all other programs will remain virtual. So we'll, we'll make those changes right away. Golf course open, limited to two people per group, one person per golf cart, check in via window, vice pro shop counter, restricted access to pro shop. And, uh, and so then we also, uh, what was the other note here? I want to say they, uh, customers cannot return a purchase there and must ask for assistance to buy a product. No food, only drinks available for purchase. So bring some food for your 18 holes of golf. I know quite a few people have been eager for that to open up. Cliffside RV Park, open to active duty only. Again, let's start with that, uh, and then we'll roll into expanding that as we see how these measures work. Um, we're limiting customer base for camping. Yurts and rental RVs are open, and uh, no group functions allowed for pavilions or, or on the group uh, tent site, et cetera. So some good measures that we got there to allow some good recreations on a beautiful day, to, day like today. Barbershops, beauty salon, open on the 21st again. All customers and staff will be required to wear PPE, wear, wear the cloth face covering, um, cape, use hand sanitizer. There's no waiting area and haircuts will be by appointment only. You'll be allowed into the shop at your appointment time, follow floor markings and signs to ensure physical distancing. So, so that should go well. We're also doing active duty for a couple days, right, Excel, on the barbershop. Active duty Monday through Thursday. Be here on Altfield. Seaplane Base will be open to all customers throughout the week. Okay. So Altfield, Monday through Thursday, active duty only. Uh, otherwise, open to all customers. Um, Seaplane Base at the main NEX, open to all customers all days that they're open. Let's see. Uh, chapel, like I said, 21st of June will be their first service and congregations limited to 50 maximum. So this is another one where when you're coming in and, and leaving the chapel, you need to wear a cloth face covering because you can't be assured of maintaining that physical distancing. But once you get to your seating, then you can take your face coverings off. We're not going to uh, conduct ceremonies requiring physical touching or passing of artifacts and we also, um, you know, daily they're doing counseling and stuff in there. So they continue to do that to the dial the chaps and through through other ways that we can appropriately uh, do counseling, which is very important throughout all this. And so they're going to do they're going to reinstitute small group counseling for groups less than 10 people. And yes, there will be pizza and we'll make sure we do that appropriately. OK, so housing. So. Hunt already sent the letter out first of June, I think it was, that they opened up their offices by appointment and uh, and and they've started getting to the routine maintenance. Certainly they've been to my house to do some of the routine maintenance that, that they've needed to do. And so uh, they're working hard to get through that. And they've also got a new pest control contract, by the way, just had him at my house yesterday trying to chase down a mouse and lay a bunch of traps. So um, so I really appreciate the timeliness uh, of their service and also getting that new pest control contract on. And so uh, so our housing office at the Norwester has resumed its office services. You can still get on the phone and through email the ways that we've been doing this. But if you need that in-person uh, service, then they'll be open for that and also for inspections. Now, one of the things on inspections, I will tell you, is that we have had some people move out and um, and Hunt has been trying to work virtual inspections, trying to make sure that they maintain the right precautions. And when you get a resident who's moving out and they've got nothing to hide because there's no day, they can do it virtually. They show them the whole house, answer their questions. It's all good. When you have a resident who maybe doesn't want to show the condition of the whole house, well, needless to say, it's very hard to do a virtual um, inspection with that resident. And then once they vac vacate the home and Hunt gets in there, then there's a lot more work that needs to get done. And so we're going to be working with commands just to try to make sure that we're getting these inspections done. 
because now we've got this PCS are coming. Already summertime, we get at least a third of our PCS moves in the summertime. Now tack on to that this, this wave of PCSs that are going to start happening. And uh, and we got to make sure these these pre-move move out inspections are being done appropriately. Not only that, with the change um, in mindset from last spring for with the CNO empowering commands to be more involved in this process appropriately, then uh, then commands need to be involved in that pre-inspection move out so that we can make sure we're advocating for our sailors, chiefs, officers, and their families, and uh, and making sure that we do our best that we can to turn over houses in clean, good condition to hunt so that hunt can get in there, fix discrepancies, get get them refreshed, and get them turned over as quickly as possible so we can work through this summer PCS surge. So I do look forward to commands being a little more involved in that this year as we work through this. Obviously, we'll be using all the cleaning protocols in the offices and, and such throughout that. For the commissary, uh, there's no the we've already made some changes in the last couple of weeks that I actually did have authority over, surprisingly, but I did. So I, we met, went ahead and eased the capacity limit. So there's no longer a capacity limit. I was in there over the weekend, felt a little claustrophobic because I just wasn't used to being around so many people at one time. Uh, but obviously, everybody's wearing the cloth face covering. Most people are following the the floor markings and all that kind of stuff. So all good there. They did just say that you're allowed to bring your reusable bags now, but you have to bag your own groceries. Uh, we're still doing zero nine to 10 on Tuesday through Thursday for older customers, immunocompromised, pregnant, uh, basically if you're somebody who, who feels you're at risk. Now let's face it, uh, there's, there's HIPAA things, there's all kinds of reasons why we can't directly police that. So I've said it many times, we're, we're relying on people and their honesty. To, uh, to do that. So uh, the staff there shouldn't be asking you any questions, just checking your ID. We are doing 100% ID check still. And um, so checking your ID and then giving you a clean cart to go in. But there's not that 75 carts that we're managing. They've, they've got all the carts they need. And yep, there you go. Uh, so the exchange I talked about on the tailor and uh, service and dry cleaning, et cetera, and yes, and Navy Lodge. Navy Lodge, by the way, I was over there about a week or so ago. Uh, they've been doing some renovation work starting last November, I think is when they started. So really great work. It was actually uh, a really beautiful stuff that they've done in there. They got two family suites now. Uh, they've gone and renovated all the rooms. They, they really look nice. So I encourage you to take a look at them. Not only that, not only do they look nice, but they obviously provide great service second year in a row that they were just awarded the Carlson Award for their outstanding service. So I look forward to having a, a little uh, presentation for them when we can make that happen, considering our mitigation measures here. So really great, great staff there. They've been supporting our PCS families, supporting uh, ROM personnel, all kinds of stuff throughout this. So really great, great staff over there. Appreciate what they're doing. And same thing with NGIS. Great staff there. They've been supporting our pre-deployment sequesters, our ROMs, our uh, mission essential travel personnel. <clears throat> so a lot of a uh, lot of a lot of people have been through there, and we've maintained really good service throughout. Excuse me. So there's again back to that kind of local space available. So if you live right around here and you need an NJS or Navy Lodge room then give them a call. <clears throat> we're gonna maintain ROM requirements. If we have another Caribbean squadron going out to sea, we're gonna have to use a lot of NGIS to house the personnel in that squadron. So we would house them in the barracks and in NGIS for two, three weeks, whatever it is, while they go through that final period before they go out to sea. And um, and so we will we'll go through that again and need to maintain that space. By the way, when you talk space A, there's not space A travel on uh, through our terminal right now either. So uh, don't come knocking on the door there thinking that you can get on a flight to Hawaii. Okay, uh, yep, the gym. Yes, it will be open for active duty. And then we'll, we will be evaluating that right away. Okay, so really if we're not seeing the utilization out of the active duty members uh, right away, and I've got capacity to be able to allow other folks in, maybe in certain time blocks or whatever it is, 
want to make sure that we get to access for civilian or our, our, uh, all other affiliated personnel, families, retirees, et cetera. So we'll look to do that pretty quickly as we evaluate the utilization of these services. Uh, just some more notes on the community rec, community rec, bowling and paintball, uh, bowling and gear rental, reservations only for the bowling and gear rental. So you can't just show up. Uh, so the, the number there is 72432. And that's Monday to Sunday, 10 a.m. to 220. Close 230 to 330. Again, we need to close for an hour to do some cleaning and then opening again 336. Paintball reservations only, limited to groups of five, same hour, same number. We'll, we'll make sure we post all this information as well. So stage two in HBCOM Bravo, does this mean that service members will be able to attend church services in town? So uh, there was a message that went out that said that now people can go use re restaurants, barbers, church services, et cetera. So I will tell you that you got to check with your command though, because that same message, if you bother to, a lot of people probably just dropped right off there. They're like, hey, I got the answer I needed. I'm out of here. So the, the caveat to that is, and you got to read all the way through the message, that it's up to commands to make sure that they put their policies on as appropriate. Likewise, there's higher level commands like compact fleet that is putting restrictions on personnel because of the nature of the compact fleet um, commands. So shocker, not everybody around here falls under my authority and my chain of command. Uh, there's multiple TICOMs uh, affiliated with any of Swoopy Island. So I, I really got to defer to, yes, there is some latitude, but you got to check with the command. Commands need to put out policies to make sure that people absolutely understand what their expectations are and how I plan on handling that local leave Liberty kind of Washington state stuff is I, I want to be able to send a weekly um, uh, weekly policy out based on how we look at different counties, what the different counties are dealing with trends so that we can give our folks in NASWI an understanding of what the expectations are, share that with the other commands so they can look at what their chain of command is saying, look at what policy we're putting out and be able to put out a weekly policy on Liberty local leave expectations as well. So, Per national media, media with an apparent resurgence of COVID-19 virus that is equivalent to or in excess of the original wave of infections. What strategy is the Navy prepared to take to address this should such a resurgence become evident in our region? Kind of back to the HP Con Charlie question. Um, you know, I get it. I get all the phone notifications about spikes and all that kind of stuff. I'd love to see the media's definition of what a spike is versus what the actual data is showing. Um, obviously, they're going to be more alarmist to get your attention. We're going to be very methodical and thorough in our data analysis. It goes with our decisions. If we do see a, a resurgence of the coronavirus, we will go back to the measures that we've been taking to, uh, to cramp down to make sure we maintain the readiness of our mission and the health and safety of our, our personnel, including our families and our community. When will all the gates return to normal operations? We did that on Monday. So um, we're seeing a little more demand. Uh, I will tell you, I'm seeing some pretty light traffic at a couple of our gates. So we'll continue to evaluate that. The other difference now versus before coronavirus, we had the Corpus Christi event. Uh, there was also an event uh, this weekend, I think it was up in Kodiak, Alaska. Uh, there was obviously the event in Pensacola. So we, we have directives for some extra security measures we were taking. And uh, we'll continue to evaluate those, the traffic through our gates, the stress on our security force to maintain those extra security measures. And I will not uh, hold back at shutting down some access if I feel like the utilization of the access is not there and I need to provide some relief for our security folks too. So we'll continue, like everything else, we'll continue to evaluate that. As of right now, all the gates are open per their pre-COVID um, uh, pre-COVID times, that doesn't mean everybody should come back to work, okay? We are not in a position where everybody's coming back to work right now. We are in, in, a, in a time where we are bringing more people back to work. Again, like I've said every time, it is a command decision. And so uh, commands need to decide if they're in a period of their cycle where they can get the job done in a blue and gold, a two shift, uh, you know, every other day 
kind of um, process or if they need everybody there for five days. I think most commands that work shifts are doing a couple shifts, but taking a break in between, make sure they sanitize the workspace and keep down that period where they would normally have twice the number of people. We don't want to have that. And so those kinds of things are still going on and they're going to still go on. Okay. We're not out of the coronavirus thing. So we will continue command by command and within each command determine who they need to bring in to get the mission done and, uh, and be ready. And so, uh, so with that, yes, all the gates are open, uh, but that doesn't mean everybody should come back to work. And so we're still looking at, we still have virtual uh, distributor workforce stuff, teleworking going on for folks who can do that. Uh, but we have incrementally more people coming back to work. Any idea when the colleges will be allowed back on base? Yes, I do. Thanks. I have an idea. Thanks to Gil Williams, our Navy College Program Region Advisor. So he provided the following. On-base schools will slowly start phasing a return to work no earlier than the 6th of July, so after the 4th of July weekend, or later as directed by installation CO or the school's internal health and safety guidance. So no earlier than the 6th of July. As we get closer to that, that's a service where we'll look at where we are and what they can do responsibly, taking appropriate mitigations. School counselors are available virtually for both on-base and distance learning programs. Contact the Navy College Program Region Advisor, Gil Williams, for their contact information. Uh, that's gilbert.w.williams at navy.mil, 360-396-0218. And uh, we'll try to put that information in the comment stream. Okay, I already talked about personal leave. Um, for those of you who are coming in now, let me just recap real quick, uh, kind of the main point of this. And that's the, <clears throat> that we got HPCon Bravo. We're in reset stage two, uh, but we are, have not had a easing of our travel restrictions at this point. There's a lot of policies, follow My Navy HR, or look for our sharing of the My Navy HR videos. If you have particular questions about a PCS, contact the My Navy Control, uh, My Navy Career Center, and uh, or ask the question through the My Navy HR social media, and they'll get back to you. Also, stay in touch with your incoming and your outgoing chain of command, your sponsor, your ombudsman, to address your specific questions. Because an answer I provide you for your specific question today could very well be different than it's uh, than next week or tomorrow. Uh, so back to <clears throat> these are the the uh, installations that are all on the uh, on the My Navy HR COVID travel tracker. OK, this is the OSD, you know, state delineation. But this is the Navy delineation in there. We are expecting some changes to this, hopefully by Friday. But we'll see what happens with that decision. So um, so keep working with your chain of command on leave. And we'll continue to see that evolve through the next few weeks. Okay, recycling. What's the restart plan on recycling? So the recycling um, has continued to go on. There was a very brief period of time in the very beginning where we shut recycling down. Uh, but that was not sustainable because we've got a 68% diversion rate here. So 68% of our solid waste goes to the recycling program. And so that's why it's a great program. So we really need to keep that going just to support whoever was working around here and so they have hours they're basically in the morning i think they're like 8 to 11 or something like that but um you can contact them that is for people working on the installation that's not for people to come in off installation and drop off the recycling and uh, so we are looking at trying to expand that service provide some kind of drop off capability we're not there yet uh, but we are looking to do that but right now if you're working on the installation you have some recycling needs, please call them um, and they'll they'll help you work through that. All right. Any other questions? <clears throat> Let me just address one of the topics out there. Uh, and that's the um, that's the race issue. OK, because some people had concerns. Uh, well, there are a lot of concerns out there and I'm not going to dig too deep into this. What I have been doing is. I've met with my leaders uh, virtually because that's the way we need to do it right now. And, and I've had some in-person conversations as I've been able to get out about and talk to some people. Uh, but that's really what needs to be happening. So for me, 
uh, it's I've got two young boys. I'm trying to make sure that they're informed, educated, and understand race in America and how to uh, how to work through this, how to how to live uh, in um, making continued progress, making our society better. Uh, so that's what I'm doing as a father, and then also as a leader here on the installation, working with my leaders to be able to have those conversations. If this were a time outside of coronavirus, I'd be having quarters and doing other stuff. I did do a virtual quarters uh, right before this, uh, the, uh, the most recent uh, issues kicked off. And so I'm going to have another quarters coming up soon. I'll be talking about it. So it's something that we need to be talking about. And, um, and certainly we need to not just talk about it. I mean, listen to Sino Gilday's message out there. We need to be listening. That's, that's something we very much need to be doing. We need to be listening and understanding people's opinions. People are going to get on social media with their keyboard courage, throw stuff out there that they might say in a different way when face-to-face -face with somebody. But frankly, it's the face-to-face -face conversations that we have to have. Yes, I'm committed to making sure that uh, everybody's treated equally. Uh, I have been in this Navy for a while. Uh, I've seen some great posts about Admiral Zumwalt and the, the uh, leadership that he provided back in the early 70s. And um, unfortunately, you know, we've made progress. I feel like that's my own personal opinion, but I know that we have not made uh, enough progress and we need to continue making progress. I know that I have not experienced uh, racism as many who work for me and work around me have experienced. And so those are the things that we need to be aware of. So I'm not going to post a video like you've seen of some other senior officers out there, but there are some great ones to look at. The new chief of staff of the Air Force put one out there that was really, I thought, uh, very good. Uh, uh, General uh, Fitz Stewart, who I worked for in a previous job, he put one out. He put an article out there that I thought was very informative. So it's really great to read these things uh, and view these things. There's some great articles I've read and some podcasts recently. But that's all great, but we got to be able to have that conversation at the deck plates. we got to create the environment where we can have those conversations and talk about those things. One of the reasons I bring it up, first of all, it's a very important topic and it's relevant right now, and we need to continue uh, going on that. But also, because there were some concerns out there in the community about the guidance that was put out that um, in HBCon Charlie, remember, we need to limit our attendance at gatherings, and we see these protests out there that um, that they want to, you see people wearing cloth face coverings, but they're not really maintaining the physical distancing and all those kinds of things that we need to make sure that we can continue doing our mission. So, uh, so different commanders put out that guidance in different ways. And I know for some people, frankly, no matter how you put it out there, it's going to rub you the wrong way because you're frustrated. You want to get out there. We had some protests that were here in Oak Harbor and a quarters Coopville. And frankly, talking to the police chief and NCIS, they were all done very well. You know, there were some uh, uh, get, people were able to get out there, but unfortunately not our service members because we were in HP Con Charlie. So as we move forward, continue to, um, to look for ways to express your thoughts responsibly and, uh, and participate appropriately moving forward. But meanwhile, as a leader here, I'm going to continue my effort to have those conversations here to listen to the perspectives of others and try, just try to create the environment where we can continue making progress. Okay, lots of great uh, fleet and family programs that we've been doing virtually and, uh, uh, and MWR programs. We're looking forward to, to get, getting those going. Uh, one of the things that uh, MWR, speaking of uh, catering and rentals, open for reservation by appointment only and, and uh, facility walkthroughs. So when the state goes into phase three, that's where we're going to go to 50 people or less and then state phase four, 50 people or more. So uh, as we look at that, we'll be, that's one where we'll be looking to be aligned with the community there and uh, making sure that we open up those services appropriately. Let's see. Any other questions coming in that need to get answered? Okay. I think I've got, uh, you know, the rest, there's all kinds of details. I could go on and on with the details. I'm just going to continue getting that information out through all our channels. So uh, let's see. I think that's it. Summer reading program. I signed up for the summer reading program. Keep the boys reading through the summer. Um, I 
that I'll be maybe 20% successful on that at the most, but I'll give them my best shot, keeping them active and all, off the PlayStation, all that good stuff. So we'll see how that goes. And, uh, yep. Yeah, and I got all my notes. So, okay. Well, thanks. Thanks everybody for your time. I appreciate it. Um, so just to, to finish up, we are HB Con Bravo reset stage two. Um, we are looking forward to opening up services starting tomorrow in some limited capacities. And we're going to continue evaluating that we will push the, the, um, uh, the evolution of those services so that we can try to as rapidly as possible open that up to as many people as possible. We'll continue monitoring community trends. If we see some legitimate concerns out there in the community, then we will retreat. And depending on what we're seeing, it, it might not be a full retreat to HPCon Charlie and, and backwards to like stage one. It might just be that we need to dial back a service or something. So um, we'll continue to try to take some specific solutions based on data. Uh, we've got a great uh, clinic staff, great FIO, uh, everybody who's going to do the contact tracing and make sure that we understand each situation so we can take the appropriate precautions around each situation. So um, all this stuff will continue evolving. We'll keep pushing the information out. I appreciate your time joining us today. And uh, so please, if you have further questions, send it to the NES Whidbey Island PAO email or, or any other way that you've been getting questions in. Send the ombudsman. I'll be doing an ombudsman assembly next Tuesday, the 23rd. Look forward to talking with them again. So if you have follow-up questions, feel free to send it to your ombudsman so that they can get those questions to me on next Tuesday. And, um, and yeah, I think I've talked enough. So have a great evening. Uh, have a happy Father's Day to all those other fathers out there this Sunday. And, um, and thanks.